Hey, what's up everybody? I hope you're having a wonderful day. So big news, about a month ago, I was able to get my fourth property under contract, bought, signed, sealed, delivered. And so that's my third rental property in the books that should generate me about $2,500 in passive income a month. Now I say this because this channel has always been about document my journey as I do it. And to try to show you guys that it's totally possible to do the things that I'm doing. You can do this to take money from uh, a YouTube channel that's free to upload and take that and buy a passive portfolio of properties that can give you money for the rest of your life. And I think that's very important to show and to get the message out on. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about why I bought this property, the numbers, and pretty much how it fits into my portfolio and how this all kind of comes together. Try to give you the tips and tricks to like legitimately pick out a real estate property for an investment and uh, the trials and tribulations that where I've messed up and and how I messed up on this deal and how it turned out to be a blessing and I learned from it. So here we go guys, we're gonna talk about that in this video. How I went from a, a house that was just a house in the hood to a nice little cottage house that somebody's gonna enjoy and it's gonna help me out in the future. So here we go. So if you've been following along with the vlog, you know one of my passions is real estate. Sometimes I post it on my Instagram and it's done worlds for me. I know a lot about it and it's exploded my net worth over the last few years. It's really something I think everybody should explore and try to put it in their investment portfolio. And right now is a pretty good time being that there's a lot of properties that are kind of in distress. You see, this YouTube channel has been an amazing adventure and you know, it's crazy that it's free to upload. So pretty much all the money that I make on this YouTube channel goes to buying another piece of property after expenses and things like that. So this channel made about $80,000 last year. And uh, with the, the rent from my other houses, I was able to purchase my third rental property. I've purchased four properties all together with the channel. This is something that I think anybody can do. It's free to upload and these hobbies can over time do some really miraculous stuff. I've always looked for C-class neighborhoods that are good working class people that I can buy cheap and they'll rent at a good rate. See this right here is what you're looking for. If you can find a house with junk being piled out by the street, it's about a 90% chance somebody is fed up with something going on in that house, i.e. motivated seller. See, I've always wanted a cash flow portfolio, one where I can take that cash and put it into something else. So that'll constantly allow me to keep my money moving over time. This is why I don't ever really invest in no money down and leveraged properties. I save my money up, I buy my properties cash, just like Dave Ramsey says. And for me, that's been what has worked. And over the course of the last few years, I've really found that to be uh, my sweet spot for rental properties. I make the money and then I invest it into properties. You make the money and you invest it into properties. My thing is I look for properties between a 1.5% rent rate and a 2%. So when you think about rent rate, I'm looking at if it's a $100,000 property and it rents for $1,000 a month, it's a 1% property. So like, let's say it's a $60,000 property, I want it to rent for $1,200 a month. That would be awesome. That would be a 2% property and that's the, the albatross, the golden unicorn, everything you want. But usually you'll have to go for a 1.5% property. And on this one, I bought this property for about 52,000. After expenses, I was at like 60, which 60 goes into 925, about 1.54. And for me, that's pretty cool. One thing you gotta do when you buy these old houses is go underneath and check out the pipes and you gotta check out the wiring. And a lot of times they're laying on the ground you gotta crawl underneath going in. And see, if I know I'm at a 1.5% or better, I know it's gonna cover my expenses such as taxes, maintenance, and management just fine, and I'm gonna have a good cash flow on property at the end of the day. Check it out. Found a bicycle tire. <laughs> Not a good though. See, the most important part of all this stuff is knowing your numbers before you get into it. So let's get into this property. The only thing really better than getting a 1.5% property to 2% property is if you can get the one next door, the one you already got for 1.5% or better. And that's exactly what I did. So one day I was over there working on my other property and the next door neighbor came over and said, hey Jack, 
I want to sell that property. I said, you know what? I want to buy that property. So we made a deal. Drew up a contract right there on the spot, sent it over to her. She signed it. Actually, I did it on my phone, just digitally signed. Shot it over to the title company, and you know what? We had a deal. Shot the earnest money back to the title company, and we were in agreement. All right, I'm doing my final walkthrough on this old house. Gonna go sign for it in a minute. See all these floors. Power's turned off. See, check it out. Got to redo all this tile right here and do some painting. Should be rocking and rolling. Usually if there's an add-on, there's been a water leak. I don't know if you can see where they patched that up. Water leak. It's got to have a roof. That's why I got it so cheap. They couldn't afford to do a roof. Also, if there's a septic tank, just go ahead and write that one off because most of the time the county will not let you fix it. Especially if there is a sewage hookup out, out front, like for the city, the county will not let you fix the existing tank just because they want to make you switch it over. Okay, so I just got me some insurance for the new house. It's all ready to go. My money's, my money's safe with insurance. Check out how fancy this table is. Look at this. Harper Title Company, they fancy. Nice table. It took me about 10, 15 days to close because I did it all in cash because I don't believe in dealing with those banks, especially when you're doing a cash property when there's a little something wrong with it and they don't want to give you a conventional VA, whatever home loan. And being that I was buying this thing in an LLC, I didn't want to deal with any type of transfer speed up clauses in those crazy bank mortgages. You'll learn a lot about your house underneath it. Let me tell you what, look at this bad boy. Luckily the power's off. Play by play here. If I was a betting man, there's either rats or a rattlesnake underneath this here piece of plywood. So beware of this stuff if you ever go underneath the house. I can see where they go in and out. See the holes? I guarantee that piece of plywood's got something gnarly underneath it. And I gotta get to those wires. <sighs> and I knew after my walk around, after the four point, you, after you do this well, you kind of know what you're looking at. Clean roofs, electrical, AC, plumbing, etc. Kind of know what you're looking at. I knew the plumbing had been changed out. I knew it needed a roof. And I thought it was going to cost me about $4,000. The AC was two years old. The septic tank would never pass inspection because 1940s houses have like one of those sand bottom uh, uh, septic tank so I was like that's just gonna cause me problems and there's a giant tree sitting on top of it so I said I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out because my goal on these properties is to basically never touch them again once I get them renovated pay somebody else to do that but in the renovation process I'll get up grab my tools and we'll get out there after it so some of the things you gotta look out for on these old houses is uh, if there's a tile floor and this is an off-grade house tiles not gonna stay down it's gonna pop crack break Whatever, because most of the time it's not good tile to begin with. Also, if you're buying these old houses, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this one out there. Electrical box. It's got the old service, like a 60 or 50 or 100 amp. Uh, odds are, if there's fuses or if it's old, you're gonna have to fix this thing right here. Usually it's about 1800 bucks to get one of these things changed out for a 200 amp service. Because renters do not wanna pay for gas deposits. I'm just telling you that one up front. Also, wood floors always have to be refinished because they never put enough poly on them to begin with. You need at least three to four coats on a wood floor. This was like one to two coats. Mine at the house was two coats. Totally botched that one, I gotta do it again. So I wasn't gonna incur a pump out fee as soon as I got a family in there. So I said, it's gonna cost me about $3,000 to run the sewage on that and I'd still come in under budget. But that's why you always throw that 10% rule in there because it'll always come back to get you. So I also knew after my walk around, me and Samantha saw that cracked tile. And cracked tile, to the inexperienced eye, just looks like cracked tile. But I know if there's one, a cracked tile in front of a sink or a toilet, odds are the floor underneath it is probably rotten. Well, I made a rookie mistake on this and I overlooked that. So me and Samantha had to knock up all that tile because it was cracked. All right, here we go. All this tile's got to go, it's broken. It's about to get weird in here. I thought it was just cracked because it wasn't placed down right. But you know what? It was cracked because the floor was soft. And that's where I found the termites. See, it had some old termite damage underneath the stove. The subfloor was kind of eh. And the water, it had this crazy composite plywood that just uh, was not going to hold the tile down. And the dude who installed it basically put screws way too far apart. And that's another story, so it had to come up. It took me about three hours and some real 
muscle building, you know, workout in the dark and hopefully, I'm glad it wasn't a hot day. To get that stuff out of there, Samantha was down at Lowe's trying to pick out some vinyl plank, which that was a pretty good idea. It cost me, you know, about 800 bucks. So I was basically in it, a roof, replacement from the septic to the sewer, thousand bucks basically for the floors and I spent 500 on a brand new refrigerator because you never open the refrigerator when you buy a new property. You throw that junk right out the back door and you get another one because their odds are they're gonna go out. And don't buy one of refrigerator on Facebook Marketplace because it's gonna go out in like a year or two and then if you run all the, the tenants' groceries, you gotta pay for that. So just chunk that one, get a brand new refrigerator, which you can get them at Lowe's for like 500 bucks, maybe 600 bucks. I got an $80 stove that was pretty much like brand new off Facebook Marketplace. No dishwasher, you don't want to maintenance one of those and I didn't do a garbage disposal because you don't want to maintenance one of those either and odds are they're just going to get stuff stuck in there. And if you're ever questionable about this stuff, get an expert to look at it. Don't skimp out on WDO inspections, that's termites, bugs, and just wood destroying organisms. And a home inspection, like, Odds are, if you're a rookie at this, get a home inspection. If you've been doing it a while, you might skip the home inspection. If you're not, if you're buying things for cash, because if you buy it cheap enough, odds are you can fix it and you won't be losing money on the property, but never go against your numbers. That will always come back to get you, and it almost got me here. But see, not only did I find that I had a little termite damage I had to fix, but some of the rim joists were a little eh, and they weren't as bad as I thought they were once I started looking at them. So check this out right here, underneath the siding, behind the sink. You always go look behind and underneath the sink, behind and underneath the bathroom. Look at this. See all that right there? It's not as bad as you think though. On an inspection, it just looks scary. But down, down in there, there's still some good wood. I'm not sitting on it, it's just a short rim joist. But I think this thing will be long. This thing right here will last probably Probably outlast me. They were just kind of tangy looking. But old wood will last forever. It's basically like stone, especially when it's like 80 years old. So yes, the 10% rule is in effect always. So like when you do your, you know, 80% ARV and you think you got a property, it's gonna be, you know, uh, a good deal because you're getting it at 80% of the value. Nah, 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 nah. You take your 10% off that, you throw it at 70%, 75% ARV when you're looking at these numbers to buy, and you'll be a lot better off Cause something's gonna happen, I can promise you that. So I'm going in, check it. Nothing you gotta look at, it's underneath here. What the wires look like, what kind of piping you got. And if the wire's on the ground, you gotta get them off the ground. Just tack them back up. Right when I bought this house, we had the lock down, okay? And it made the process a lot slower. What should have been a two week flip turned into a month because we couldn't get the permits for the sewer. And uh, we had to find the sewer. And then I had a roof put on immediately. So one thing you gotta look at on these houses is a roof is gonna cost you the most money out of a lot of this stuff, that and air conditioned units. But a roof will also do the most damage because you get a little leak and then you gotta put on sheetrock, then you gotta replace sheetrock, then you gotta replace wiring, you gotta replace all kinds of good stuff. My parents even had a house burned down because there was a leak in the roof water got in the walls and uh, made the outlets arc and then the whole house burned down. So you gotta get a roof put on if uh, really, first thing, it's gotta have a good roof. Some people just let them go, but it's not my MO. I'd rather try to hustle me a cheap roof like with this one, had some shingles left in the shed, had them buy the exact same shingles to go on the roof, matched them and uh, got the roof for about $800 cheaper which leaked three times and I had to replace the ceiling sheet rock three times. I'm still bitter about that. Even though I've used the, the roofer before, a flat roof never does what it's supposed to be and will always usually leak for a minute until you put enough roofing tar slash, I think they call it specter, the white stuff. It's like a rubber sealant that goes in the crevices. Look guys, don't buy flat roofs unless you steal that house. I mean, you're like a bank robber running around with a satchel because that house will cause you problems for a while. And flat roofs, that rolled roof stuff doesn't last as long as like shingles. Just, it's a pain and just stay away from it. Just word to the rise unless you get it really cheap. 
This one had a back add-on that was rolled roofing and man, Clex leaves, the deck rots out, I had to replace all that, and that was where the 10% rule came into effect. The roof was a royal pain. You gotta add on the extra holding costs that I had to hold the property before vacant until uh, we got all this figured out, and even Lowe's was like, we didn't know what the world was gonna do at the time, and it just added on and added on. But me and Samantha were able to do this together, and uh, it was a good bonding experience. We only yelled at each other a few times. But she was, she's really handy when it comes to this stuff with plank and things like that. Paintings, her expertise, and even laying tile. The wood floors were actually in pretty good shape, but I had to re-poly the top layer. So I mean, I had to sand it down a little bit. I had to put a little stain. Well, actually, Samantha put the stain down. She's better at it than me. And got it all an even color. And then I threw about four layers of poly on there because with renters in there, I can guarantee you they're going to scratch those floors up and you don't want to have to keep sanding them because eventually you can't do that anymore. So we put like four layers of poly on there. I only ruined like three pairs of socks trying to put it on. If you've ever done it, you know what I'm talking about. And them floors are starting to look really good. All right, this is what I got. It's the same cans and it's two-toned satin gloss. And now I've got gloss throughout the whole house because I did another coat. Are you kidding me? Once we got this house all finished, I was pretty pumped that once I tossed it to the management company, they got it rented in three days above what I thought I was gonna be able to rent for. I thought if I was lucky, I was gonna get $900 a month for this house. I was thinking more 875, so I did my numbers pretty shallow, but I actually got 925 and rented it in three days. And to add to those numbers, I had about $60,000 in this house. It's worth about 75. So I generated about $15,000 in equity. Some would say it's worth 80. I like to go a little shallow. I own the house next door. It's worth about seven, low 70s, but it's a little smaller. So I like to say that I generated about 15 to $20,000 in equity on my $60,000. For me, that was a win. And since everything was slow in February, March, April-ish on YouTube, so I decided to just take that time, concentrate on this, and get back after it afterward. The housing market here in Pensacola has exploded. There's like nothing on the market. And you can rent just about anything for anything you want. That's just the way the market is right now. There's low inventory, and if you can get your hands on a house, uh, it, you can get a good rent rate, especially downtown with the, in proximity of downtown. The commute is pretty close to the sprawling bars and the things that are going on downtown. And that's kind of like how this all fits into my portfolio. I have two properties on the same street next door to each other now. And I got one in another area, which is kind of far away. Don't buy a house that's more than 30 minutes of a drive anywhere because renovating that thing is just awful. Samantha just learned that lesson with her house that she had rented and is up for sale now um, in Milton. So uh, it's a long ways to drive. Word to the wise, don't buy properties that are all over the place. Try to get them in one spot. It's just your maintenance costs will go down so much by just not having to go back and forth. But that's it guys. That's how my properties will generate $2,500 a month before expenses. Expenses fluctuate, but that's all I got guys. I wanted to share my journey with you on this house and maybe you can pick something up from this because that's the way this channel is. It's just for me to tell y'all my experiences and kind of maybe it helps a person or two. See you guys on the next video. See you later.